Zach Din, welcome to Progress With Us. Thank you for coming on today, brother. It's good to have you here. No problem at all. So I want to know about, I want you to tell me the story about when you sold <laughs> a car to the rapper H a few years ago. So we didn't sell the car. I'll say that. We didn't sell the car to him, but he came to view a car. So the cars in question was a Lamborghini Urus or a Rolls Royce Cullinan. And I was on the way to the show in Manchester, which uh, one of my cars was at the Lamborghini Urus, and I had a call saying that H had arrived and he was viewing some cars. So I was with Ilias on the way, and uh, I said, Ilias, all right, H is there. And this is the time where H was big, you know, he just blown up. So um, we were like both a little bit excited because like it's H, is quite cool. And uh, we walk in the showroom and uh, I greet H, Really, he was lovely. Honestly, he was such an and he's really tall as well. Is he? You think H would be like quite small, but he's we, really. We tall. went and saw him perform at the Lead Mill in Sheffield at yeah. like an an under 18s yeah, well, kids like a event. Yeah. yeah, and I don't remember him looking that tall no, on stage. Like, but I'd, I'll take your word for I'd it. I'd say he's like six one. Mad. Because I thought he would be like five nine ish, but he, yeah. was, he was quite big. <laughs> and um, he was just speaking in his accent, you know, like. Oh. Calling in all your like, <laughs> <laughs> and then Ilias, bless him, he was trying to get a few sneaky pictures, and they saw him take a few sneaky pictures, and he was a bit like, Ugh. did they say anything to they him? They didn't say anything to him, but it's like not cool, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's not that it's not cool, it's just like, ask he, me for he's a, a picture. human being, just ask me for yeah, a picture, yeah. you know, as a go like, you know what I mean? It's so obvious, well, you think you're being so discreet. I've done it in Harrods before, I've seen like a few like Sasquatch Bragas, and I tried to take a sneak picture. And, like Miriam's like, what are you doing? My sister's like, what are yeah. you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to take scenes. She's like, you are so obvious right now. <laughs> like, Did you just want to go and ask him for a photo? Fabregas. I was yeah. young at the time and I was really scared. I got a photo with Rafa Benitez in Terminal 2 at Manchester Airport <laughs> about <laughs> half seven in the morning. Yeah. And he didn't say a single word to me. He just looked at me and he knew I knew. Yeah. And he just went like that. <laughs> just went like that. And I gave my girlfriend my phone. Yeah. He didn't say a word through this whole interaction, took the photo and yeah. then just turned to me winked at me and walked off cool guy little, brief, little, yeah, little yeah, briefcase yeah. cool guy you should always ask them for photos yeah no no, no. It, it's something that i would definitely if, if it happened now i'd definitely take the opportunity yeah. to do it yeah so you've been running apollo prestige vehicles mm -hmm. for you're 22 now yep and were you doing it while you were at uni so or was it after after uni how apollo started um my family's been doing cars for a long time mm -hmm. um they stopped doing cars and um we're basically just chilling, venturing into other stuff, property, whatever. And um, so I've grown up around cars. It's always been my passion. It's always been something I've loved. I literally, when I was probably like 13, 14, 15, 16, what I'd do is I'd play a game in my room where I'd play car exhaust noises and I'd have to guess which car it was. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm a proper freak when it comes to cars. Like, I, I love it. Like I'm that guy where if a car drives, I'm like, oh. Lambo, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you've you've like inputted that into Ilias because Ilias is the only yeah, other yeah, person well, I know. Who well, well, that. th that's it. You know, he's kind of because obviously he's like a really close family friend. Mm -hmm. He, I feel like I've put that car thing into him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I'm so car involved, which is great. And um, so, obviously, seeing my dad do cars as well, and him being my role model, my inspiration, mm -hmm. that was like, that's just what I want to do. So when I was in school, when I was, uh, I eventually went to university and did my A-levels, I never knew what I wanted to do. I just knew that it was cars. I knew that yeah. I wanted to sell cars. I knew that that is, that's it. There's no other option, but I knew that I had to get a degree. So I didn't know what degree I wanted to do. So when I was in school, I had a really an inspirational art teacher called Mr. Julian. Shout out Mr. Julian. <laughs> Shout out Mr. Julian. <laughs> And he was my art teacher and I've always been really creative. I, I, I've sold paintings in the past. I've done like, I'm really quite creative. Paintings that you've painted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, 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 proper creative. Um, so I ended up doing an art course at university, which wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> and it was for you? Leeds. Oh, right, so right. It, wasn't, it wasn't great. It, it wasn't that it wasn't great because of the course. It was because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, being art, uh, doing an art course where you are, you know, needs to be in a studio all the time and you can't be in a studio, it's a bit, what's the point? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I needed to be in the studio every day doing work, doing work, doing work, but I was just at home. So, you're still working like with Apollo at the time? No, so, so, I, so I'll, I'll, 
backtrack a little bit. So when I were, when I just started sixth form, I was 16, 17, 18. Um, when I was 16, I uh, <laughs> my, my dad's one of my dad's friends said that I want to. I've got a car to sell. Uh, would you buy it? So he said, what car is it? It was a Ford KA. Have any of you seen this Ford KA? <laughs> yeah, the little one. <laughs> don't, don't disrespect my Ford KA. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the reg, we put it into We Buy Any Car, they offered 70 quid for it. Wow. So she was upset. She was like, my grandma's died. This was her car. I thought I was going to get like a big chunk of money from her. <laughs> and no, 70 Should quid. So we gave her 100. And but I was like, what are we going to do with this car? So I was like, I'll have it. I'll have my first car. And that was my project. So, Sick. bought the car for hundred quid. I spent the whole summer holidays at a, um, at a uh, like a car garage, but body shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I spent every day there of the summer holiday. Every day I get dropped off in the morning, I get picked up at night because I was too young to drive. I didn't, didn't have a license. I was sixteen at the time, and I painted this car. I put a stereo in this car. I put an air filter in this car. I did engine upgrades. I did exhaust upgrades. I painted the car properly, like with a with a paintbrush. No, <laughs> <laughs> not with a paintbrush. With a proper paint gun, yeah, like a yeah. proper with, like, spray pro or proper paint gun. I thought you meant like you were there with the bucket, like and I, strokes. And our good friend Darnell, that um, was on the podcast previously, mm -hmm. he gave me his. 19 inch alloys that just come off his Fiesta to put on my Ford KA. Sick. So I was like, sick. He was telling so us about that I, Fiesta. I put, it on, I put it on and the arches were too small for the wheels. So I got an angle grinder and cut the arches, cutting through plastic, yeah, cutting through plastic. Yeah, obviously the plastic's heating up, it drops on my hands like that. <laughs> Molten plastic infused into my skin. So I'm like, oh my God, it was a bit, I was like, Dang. I wanna see a picture of this pimped out KA, man. Oh, <laughs> Can I get can I get a picture? Yeah, you can yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll just put it on the screen by the <laughs> Let me get a picture of this is the cutest car ever. Don't disrespect it. <laughs> what sixth form did you go to, by the way? Uh so I went to Notre Dame. You went to Notre, Notre Dame. Notre Dame. I see. So look, I'll show you my K when I first got her. Is that how you know Darnell? No. Oh man, oh, wow. yeah. So that was it. <laughs> and then that's it after I painted it. So yeah. So look, you can, you Yo, can see. see. I remember when you. I must have seen this car around. But this car's point. world famous. It's got world famous. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> literally. I, I remember just because of the color of it. Yeah. It so well. when I went, when I chose the color, like the guys at the body shop were like, I'd do something like every panel a different color. I was like, nah. So I went to the paint shop. I just bought the most expensive color they had. And it was that midnight purple. Oh my god, beautiful color. And uh, had the car put a little spoiler on it this big, you know, one of them plastic ones, mm. wicked. The car was like famous at the time. Like, <laughs> I called it April and everything. <laughs> like, it had a name, that was my baby. And then it came the time to sell it. And I sold it to uh, a good friend of mine for 450 quid. And that was the first car I ever sold. Right. So I, I was like, wow, I've bought this car for a hundred pounds and I've sold it for 450. But I probably spent a grand on it. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was the feeling of, yeah, I've yeah, sold the car. It. How cool is that? So then I started doing, this is a time, this is like when I was in sick form, I just started selling really cheap cars. So I'd, I'd take that money, 450 quid, I'd buy a 400 pound car, sell it for six, 700. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I was just doing that, working my way up from little Fiat 500 to little Fiestas. And I was also selling cars for people. So I'd sell, for example, you got a thousand pound car, I'd sell your car and charge you 200 quid, mm -hmm. you know? And I was just doing that on Facebook Marketplace and. Facebook Marketplace is a interesting place. <laughs> so for example, you could have a car for 2000 yeah. pounds and you get like 50 messages all from people and they're like, I'll give you 20 pounds. <laughs> like, <literally, laughs> like, I'm like, what the hell? And, but I, it was, it was really fun. And I was, I was actually doing quite well with it. And I was just selling cars there, 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 there. And I worked my way up all the way to a 50,000 pound Range Rover Sport SVR. Wow. Fair play. And were you still in sixth form? I was still in sixth form, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I sold cars, cars to my friends. Like, uh, there was a lovely girl that I sold a little mini to, and she was in my school, and I had, like, my own little cute invoice. <laughs> and it said, like, my name at the top. It was really cute and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I remember this SVR. I had the chance to buy it. I bought it cheap. And the car was a bit battered. I'd say it was a bit battered. It, it wasn't... It was just untidy. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, like, if there was, like, the interior was a bit... Mm, there was a few, like 
How were you getting insured on these cars? Is it? I um, wasn't. I wasn't. Have, oh, so you didn't have like a trade? No, no, no. It was, it was all like just buying, then go like my dad would insure or something because I was ah. 17 at the time. I was going to say on an SVR. No, so I wasn't driving the cars. That I'd just buy it and then oh, fair play. get just it dropped off at my house yeah. and then sell it. You know, the insurance was all in my dad's or whatever's name. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember this guy came. And he was like a Range Rover specialist. So I had the car for like, I don't know, 50,000. I can't remember what it was. And he came and he noticed stuff that I didn't even notice. <laughs> like, that's fudge, that's fudge, that's fudge. Not bad stuff, but like, yeah, it's just yeah, untidy, yeah. untidy. And then there was an oil leak at the bottom. So he was listening saying, and I was like, all right, so are you gonna have it or not? And he was like, well, this is wrong, 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 this is wrong. I was, I was like, oh. I'll have it. I was like, <laughs> I was like well, well, how much did he take it for? Uh, I think I knocked him like a grand off. That's all right. That's that's a sounds like he did pretty well out of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the car was cheap anyway, you know mm. what I mean? So <coughs> when I got to that stage, I was like, yeah, this is this is proper cool. Oh. <laughs> Should I put my bottle back? Yeah. I was like, this is proper cool. This is something I like really want to do mm -hmm. so after sixth form well actually i started during sixth form i was like listen me and miriam let's me my sister miriam i was like you're not doing anything i'm not doing anything let's let's open our own dealership mm -hmm. so one of our friends um had a small unit up in matlock it was like a four car unit, like literally it's tiny, but that was big enough for us. Like I was yeah. like, yeah, we'll just start with four cars. No problem. We'll stay at four cars for maybe four or five years. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> now look where I am. Yeah. And um, yeah, we just started and grew four cars to seven cars to 12 cars to 25 cars. And then when we got to 25 cars and we had 25 cars sat on our drive at our house, wow. I was like, yeah, Okay. It's time to we need to upgrade. So and when was this? This was probably I'd say like one and a half years ago. Maybe. Wow. So it's, it seems like it scaled really. Quickly. Oh my gosh. Well, the, the, it's like two years. Well, actually, oh my god, the customer that came this morning, he probably bought one of the first cars I ever sold, which was that, that SVR mm. that I was telling you about. He came. He came this morning. Met him. He's like, I bought a car for two years. lifetime value. He's like, I bought. I bought a car for two years ago, and. I was like, oh my gosh, no way, I remember you. Because we had two SVRs and he was picking between which one. I was like, you go yeah. uh, He came for a blue one and ended up buying a gray one, you know? And that's the beauty of having a showroom. People come so many times and they'll come for, I don't know, a hundred grand car. And then they'll be like, hey, that's nice. That's in the same, you know, it's- mm, Yeah. So if you were at sixth form and you were- gonna, Sorry, is this gonna fall? Um, uh, if you, you might have to tighten it a little bit on the side. If you... It's a bit of a faff, isn't it? Is it moving down too much? Go, bro go, go bold. Put it all, yeah. Put it there and then try and screw it. Oh, I think it's good. Yeah, no, yeah. No, that's cool. cool. Is, that, is that all right? Yeah, that's yeah, 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 as that long as it's fine. close to your mouth. Yeah. So, right. so if you were doing this while you were in sick form, mm -hmm. why did you end up going to university to do art? Um, It was more my dad and my mum. So, I was like, this is what this, this is what I want to do. This is, I want to do cars. <laughs> you know, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And they just said, listen, you have to have this as a backup. Like, and I think it's good. I agree with them. At the time, I didn't, but I agree with them now. Mm. Um, you know, it shows to whoever, you know, whoever you you that you've got the determination to go through and do something. You know, and you know, it's not easy. University is not easy. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why. I, got a degree as a, as a backup and I, th I feel you have to have some sort of credibility mm -hmm. I mean it's it's kind of changed now I mean we've come into a, a time now I think it's happened more recently where people are making so much money online <clears throat> where you don't need a degree yeah. or don't yeah. need that credibility but as like I'm quite old school even though I'm young 22 I feel like you should always have a backup because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. You're speaking to two university dropouts. <laughs> <laughs> drop no, 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 but yeah. it's, it's changed now. Mm. I mean, I mean, the mindset that we have is that if this all goes tits up, yeah. university's still going to be there. You know, the, yeah. Build, yeah. the buildings, yeah, yeah, the buildings yeah, yeah, aren't going to get destroyed. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but 
I, I just like to get out of the way. Yeah. I'm yeah. young, yeah. get out of the way. When I'm older, it's going to be too much faster. So this is the so sixth form. You started doing a bit of spying and selling cars. Mm -hmm. You've been to uni. And then after uni, was it just full steam ahead? Now you've got your degree. Yeah, literally. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. Straight yeah. into it. So um, the current show we've got now, um, we were looking for ages for a showroom. And property in Sheffield, like trying to find a warehouse, which isn't taken or isn't too expensive as well. It's difficult. Of that calibre as well, I guess you needed a pretty big warehouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cars. mean, at the time, we probably had 25 cars. Yeah. But we knew that we were growing at such a rate that, like, yeah, we need to, like, a space for 40. Mm. You know what I mean? So trying to find that was really hard. And we were looking for about six months. Mm -hmm. And we were about to move into a place, which I'm so happy we didn't move into. It was next to Bramwell Lane. And it was just a bit, like... It wasn't as nice as what we've got now. So once you got in the warehouse, yeah. you've got the you've got the cars in there. Was that how Apollo started, and is that how you set up it as an actual business rather than no? Just... No, a Apollo was a business at the old showroom. So if you so is that what the original name was before you guys started doing no, it as well? Then? No, 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 that... That, that was a different name. But Apollo started in the small showroom. Right. Uh, so if you go like back down our Instagram or whatever down mm -hmm. our whatever, you'll see the old showroom. It was actually really nice. I'd done everything myself, painted the walls myself. There was like an artistic wall, like Venetian plaster. I did that myself. Sick. Like everything was done by like us guys. Like we didn't hire anyone to do it. Yeah. But cool. it was really cool, really cool. Obviously the showroom now is a bit more of a warehousey feel. Mm -hmm. So it's not as like boutique-y, which the other one had the kind of uh, feel, but yeah, it was, it was really cool. And that's when it started. Nice. And by the way, when we moved into the showroom, we had 25 cars in there, the showroom was empty. Yeah. Mm. Empty, and we were thinking, how are we gonna fill this? How are we gonna, and now like, we can't even get cars in the driveway that full, you know so what I mean? What is it now, so you've got about 60 cars in it now? No, I prob we've probably got around 50, 50 yeah. around 50, but I think there's space for 60, 65 cars. Without it being like jam, jam cramped, you know, you could mm. fit more in, but you wanna be able to move around. But so uh, have either of you had any kind of business education so because no, you did art no no business in you see i like i like um you know business in school mm -hmm. you know i always like the thing where it's like you know your business teacher at school they're teaching you business but they, they, never they, they drive a micro or something you yeah. know yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's just some, you know all my <coughs> business knowledge has come from my dad he's he's the role model he's he's had every business under the sun yeah. yeah you know so he everything i've learned has come from him come from my family come from my uncle come from family friends you know we're in a fortunate position where everyone around us you know we've got really good contacts so if i want to know about something i'll go to that one if i want to know about haulage company i'll go to that one if i want to know about watches i'll go to this person if i want to know about this that you know so i think that's when they say when your network is your network mm. it's completely true Mm -hmm. you know. So have you managed to grow Apollo using the network that your family already kind of had? Obviously it helps. Yeah. But times have changed. That was what years and years and years ago. It's completely different now. There was no social media. There was nothing. He was selling cars and newspapers. It's completely, yeah. it's completely different now. Yeah. So imagine. it helps having obviously a client base already, but. Mm -hmm. I'd say 90% of our clients are already new customers or new customers mm. you know and that's the beauty when you start a business you have your own client base you know so Miriam has her own customers I have my own customers Will or Dave my other staff members they have their own customers you know and that's the beauty you all put your part in mm -hmm. you know that that's what's really nice when you first started kind of getting into the more like obviously luxury cars like the SVRs and stuff like that mm -hmm. was it more word of mouth or social media or how are you getting yourselves out there to be able to get these like higher ticket clients? Well, it's, it's a weird one because all you have to do is just put the car on auto trader. Yeah. Because if someone's looking for, uh, by the way, we sell all types of cars. It's not just luxury. We've got 15 grand, 30 grand. We work our way up all the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for example, if you want to look at a Lamborghini Ventador, for example, mm -hmm. there's only a handful in the market. So yeah. if you've listed it there, you're there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know. 
Lamborghini invited us to um, go on a tour with them. So mm -hmm. I think it was a select number of people from each dealership. So it was Lamborghini Manchester, Lamborghini London, Lamborghini Leicester. They all went on a trip. They took about 15 customers, I think, from each uh, branch. And there was a road trip from London. So obviously we're in Sheffield, but we drove to London to uh, Bologna, which is the home of Lamborghini. That's where the factory is. Cool. So driving there with like 60 other Lamborghinis, we went in the Eurus. You know, you've got SVJs, STOs, Euruses, Hurricanes. Mad. All flying down and <laughs> driving through Austria, you know, the most unbelievable windy roads. Like, then going to the factory yeah. where you, that car that you've brought has rolled off the production line. It's gone through all of that process. It was unbelievable. Are tourists allowed to go to the factory? Like, Ta do they do tours? Uh, they do tours, yes, but I don't, it's not as like in, de in depth as the one we had. Yeah. yeah. Like, we saw some cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> some like behind the scenes, like n new cars coming. Yeah. yeah. That aren't even unveiled stuff. Right. Which is really cool. So I'm guessing you have a pretty good relationship with Lamborghini, obviously. I know we you probably won't be able to speak on it too much. We've got much, but good relationships with all dealers. Yeah. <laughs> with all the dealers, we've got very good relationships. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like a great experience. That, to be oh, honest. it was incredible meeting the CEO, Stephen Wilkerman, you know. That's what was guy. he like? He's so cool. Is he? <laughs> he's proper cool. Like, you need to throw a picture of him up. Well, he's a CEO of Bugatti as well. Right. Which is cool. Mm. Like, he's cool. Like, he's slick suit long he looks like a bit like andrea perlo but a bit more gray and he's the ceo of lambergate and he's, a, <laughs> he's got an italian accent you know he's like he's a cool guy yeah he's a proper cool guy because sometimes with people like that you'd expect them to be not arrogant but if he's the CEO of Lamborghini oh, and Bugatti. Yeah, no, he's lovely. He's proper lovely. Yeah. I've met him a couple of times now. That's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guy. Who's like, do you have his phone number? No, 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 no. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I want the new, I want the new Rapalto quick. Yeah, just call him. No, 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 no. But I've met him a few times. You don't know my name some of the anything. most like high profile clients that you've sold cars to? Because you had a guest that we recently had on, Johnny Nelson. I saw that he yep, came yep, and yep. bought a... He didn't buy a car. He just came and he did like the look of a Bentley. But uh, <laughs> I, you have to you have to be a bit careful of what you say, like who you sold cars to, because a lot of them don't want people to know. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's kind of... And I understand, you know, a lot of these footballers, they get scrutiny for playing bad one week. Then you see them driving the Rolls Royce and people think, oh, you know. So yeah. you've got to be a bit careful. We sold some really high profile footballers. Yeah. High profile as in like England team, national yeah, yeah, team yeah, players. Yeah, national team, uh, Ballon d'Or winners. <laughs> <laughs> right, all right, we won't, we, won't, we, won't, we won't push, we won't push. Yeah, fair, fair. Well, we live in the UK, so you've got to let the, the, the audience figure one that yeah. one out. You know what, I'm trying to think quick, I'm trying to think about who. Ballon d'Or I've, I've got a couple of ideas. I've got a couple of ideas. So in terms of car-wise, is there like a a final car you know like in terms of for me yeah so yeah this is maybe, maybe more personal yeah, question yeah, to you yeah. what's like I don't know the way I said it to him My dream it's like the final boss of cars for you yeah what's the dream I you see I don't set my limits too far because I wouldn't go Koenigsegg I wouldn't go Pagani I wouldn't even go Bugatti like my car is the Aventador yeah like when that got launched I remember I was in primary school I remember watching the video on my phone I was in RE I was watching the video on my like first iPhone. I was like, oh my gosh. I, w I remember the unveiling so. And I remember the teacher that day, she wrote on the whiteboard and she wrote in actual permanent marker. And that's why I was watching it because she went out of the room. She wrote on the whiteboard. She tried to rub it off and couldn't ah. get it off. So she went out of the room and I whipped out my phone. I was watching this. I was like, oh my God, this car is unbelievable. Like that's the dream. So that was my poster car, mm. the Aventador. So that's a dream. Yeah. That is a dream. I mean, it's great that like, you've already getting to you're already getting to sell them. Aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Well. How old were you when you got to sit in one for the first time and drive it? Um, I remember it. It was an Aventador Pirelli edition, and I posted a picture of it. I put my number plate on it. It was. <laughs> I, put my on it. I remember it. God, I must have been seventeen, eighteen. Sick. Sat in it. I was like, oh my god, this is so uncomfortable, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but that, you know what? I mean. I don't know if that's a question you want to ask, what's my favorite car to drive, but I think that's what makes that car great. Yeah. How uncomfortable it is. 
I mean, do you want me to go on? Shall I speak about my favorite car to drive? It sounds like a question you want to answer. All right, all right, all right. On and over. So, my favorite car to drive, I think the best car I've ever driven in terms of, it depends what you what you're after. You know, people always ask me, "What's the best car you've ever driven? What's the best car you've ever driven?" I don't really know what to say. <laughs> but mm. um, what's up there is definitely the Hurricane STL and the Hurricane Performante. I had some real fun in a Hurricane Performante. Yeah. Like, oh, that car's amazing. But the Aventador gives you a feeling that no other car can give because it's so uncomfortable. Because it's a single clutch gearbox, you change gear and you're like, <laughs> like it's so <laughs> delayed. But that's what, like, you get out of the car, you're like, you know, the noise is like, in your ear, you're yeah. like, it's like controlling a lion. Like, that's how I describe it. Like, yeah, that's it. driving a Porsche 992 Turbo S, which is the new, it's unbelievably fast, faster than an Aventador. But it's just a bit tame and a bit calm, whereas the Aventador is so like, <laughs> and I'm young, you know, I'm young. I like loud, I like raw, yeah. I like fierce, and that just feels like, oh. The, uh, there's, I just get so excited to talk about cars. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's what I think driving a supercar should be about. Right, but if you had to have a car mm -hmm. as your everyday driver, Easy. what would you choose? Easy, Yoris. Yeah. yeah, I thought you would say that. Easy, Yeah. Yoris is next level. It seems to be quite a lot of people's go-to nowadays. Yeah, yeah, well honest. it's everything, isn't it? It's a supercar in an SUV, it's practical, it's got the looks, it's got the sound, but also put it in Strada mode, which is, like normal mode, mm -hmm. it's quiet. It's yeah. not that loud, you know. I remember seeing the the pink one that you guys oh, yeah. around, <laughs> like around all the time. Room. I've seen you so many times, and I just see a Lamborghini on like Banner Cross, and I'm like, the only person that could possibly be is Zach Din. Yeah, that's <laughs> there's, me. That's me. There's no one else driving Lamborghinis <laughs> casually. Around no, here. well, th that car, we bought that off of a. Well, we had a customer who we had a Rolls Royce Wraith, and she was called Liv Cook. She's a world of women freestyle footballer. Cool. Um, I think, yeah, I recognise the name. You want to see, she like, does keep you up. Is she like, blonde? Yeah, blonde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. So know she that. bought the Rolls Royce off us and she was like, I've got this Lamborghini to buy exchange. So the Lamborghini was pink. So we were thinking, the, the original colour was white. The wrap, obviously it was a wrap, the pink mm -hmm. wrap. We were thinking, God, do we sell this car pink or white? Pink or white? What do we do? Obviously, probably like, 0.1% of people would buy it pink. Whereas a lot more people would buy white. But there was a lot of white ones on the market at the time. Yeah. So we listed it pink and like two weeks go by, no calls. And then it was like, we were like, all right, we're going to, we're going to book it in to get the wrap removed. Mm -hmm. Literally the next day had a call on it. So did you end up selling it pink? Then? Ended up selling it pink. Yeah. To a lovely customer of ours. She's bought loads of cars of us, you know, pink, Euros pink G-Wagon. She's got a pink Taycan now. She was not a bit of dough. What does she do for a living? <laughs> she does OnlyFans, actually. Ah, uh, OnlyFans, yeah. I she see. does really well with it. I she's see. a lovely, lovely customer. The pink, she's got the pink collection going on. It's cool, on. though. Really yeah. cool. It's, it's, it's something oh, different, pink, isn't pink it? Stones. We've had footballers, like, I've had an Arsenal central attack in mid from England uh, that called up asking to buy a... Got you, <laughs> registered. for a... Uh, asking for a Hurricane STL we had for sale. Mm -hmm. And he was so interested, like, he was like, I'm so busy, please can you transport the car down to the training ground? Mm. No, sorry, he had an away game, he was like, can you bring it to the hotel? I'll, I'll view it at the hotel and I'll, he's gonna buy it. If he, yeah. Obviously, he just wants us to check over it. Um, so we, we were like arranging everything and then went to his insurance, he couldn't get insured. And he's and he, and and he's, he plays uh, for Arsenal. Plays for Arsenal, <laughs> earning hundreds of grand a week. And he's gonna get short. He was too young, twenty-one at the time. That's insane. Mad. That is yeah. insane. Yeah. I don't know. Really he's got a G wagon now. So your, I don't know. Bring your mic. Up so I, he's got a G wagon now. So I don't know how he's done that. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, G wagons, one eighty. That was mm. three sixty at the time. Mm -hmm. You know. So a lot recently as well with TikTok and a lot of kids getting into cars. There's been a big craze of like JDM cars. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to know, obviously you're like actually in the car game, mm -hmm. you're around a lot of luxury cars and nice cars. What's mm -hmm. your opinion in kind of like the whole phase of JDM, Japanese cars? To be honest, it's something that I'm not too interested in. Mm -hmm. I'm not too interested in just because it, I'm interested in what makes me money. 
Yeah. And JDM cars don't make me money. Yeah, because I was going to say in terms of like the price and stuff as well, yeah. I know they've recently, obviously everyone loves like the Skylines and the Supras. Supras. Yeah. yeah. Too far, I do like the R34 Skyline. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're beautiful. But I remember obviously a lot of people buying them is kind of more of an investment nowadays as yeah. well. So I wondered yeah. from, I don't know if you guys have had any of those kind of cars. We got you're offered one, it but it's just... It's just obviously because they're all imports and yeah, you, it's all extra hassle. It's all a bit like it. not worth it for us. Although recently we had a nineteen, God, what was it? You know, it was nineteen something, nineteen something, something nineteen. I don't know, nineteen <laughs> something Honda NSX. That's a, they're, they're sick cars to be. Yeah, they so it really was nice. incredible. Mm -hmm. It is. It's. It went twenty seven services at Honda. It was a Honda show. No, sorry, it was 1997 Honda NSX, but it wasn't on the road until 2005. It was used as a show car by Honda, so they flew the car around the world as their show car. Mm -hmm. So they were like, "Boom, Honda NSX. This is what it looks like." So that's what that's what they used. And um, the car was owned by who was it owned by now? Some F1 driver. I've I, I've told this story like w when people ask me about the NSX, I like had a script written like what I used to say, but <laughs> it's been that long now. Who is it? I don't know. Is it owned by Eddie Jordan? Yeah. Owned by F1 driver Eddie Jordan. Cool. So the car, unbelievable history. Mm -hmm. And we recently sold that car and it went for really good money. Yeah. But that was like my first experience of a JDM car. So it's not something that you guys are super really involved no, in? No, really. not really. Not, not too bothered really, no, about no, that no. side of things. No. And it also, you get like warranty issues as well. You know, yeah. it's more likely something's going to go wrong with a 2010 whatever compared to a 73 plate g wagon you know what i mean yeah like, yeah, yeah you yeah. know it's just one of them ones i feel like if you are doing that sort of stuff that needs to be your sole purpose like mm -hmm. you need to own it's quite a niche in cars very though, niche you need to be a specialist in that mm -hmm. and you need to know everything about the cars whereas we don't really know too much about them you know yeah yeah that makes sense so long term then what's what's kind of the the goals at the moment the goals of, um or maybe where do you see yourself in a few years in the next like five to ten years in terms of the business with the cars and everything i want to be the biggest dealership in the country yeah yeah so, and i know we will be we cool. will be 100 percent. and will you will you do that by staying in sheffield or having one in sheffield manchester london well we've already started to branch out <laughs> yeah. right. um, obviously nothing's certain but we've started to branch out we're looking at a place down south um so yeah you know we're only growing that, that, that that's the that's the kind of projected goal you know open a place down there maybe somewhere else somewhere else somewhere else just keep growing and eventually be the biggest in the uk and is there anything that you want to do like personally like personal brand because at the moment obviously the apollo pages have a lot of following yeah and there'll be quite a lot of you know customers who know the business and know you through the business but is there anything yeah. that you want to do <coughs> in terms of content yeah well, well I want to speak about this actually because the Apollo Instagram, Apollo Prestige Vehicles, follow it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've only kind of recently started to push it just because we've been so busy with all sorts of other stuff, like even getting the showroom ready, like it's still yeah. not fully done, mm -hmm. you know? There's still like little things that need to be done. Um, so it's only now that we've recently started to really push it. You know, I've got my videographer, uh, Mark's Northside, he's amazing you know so we're really pushing that now and in terms of creating content myself it's something that i'm really like struggling with in mm. terms of i don't know what direction i want to go in yeah. because you see a lot of the car uh content creators influencers you could say and i personally don't like well not me but i I, it's not the content I want to create. Mm, yeah. So, for example, I'll use the example of Lord Aline. He's done incredibly well, you know. Mm -hmm. He's super successful. But he does more lifestyle stuff. It's not too car-related stuff. He'll just, like, pose with a car. Yeah, yeah, It's not yeah. too car-related. And I just don't know which avenue to go down. Do I go down the lifestyle route or do I go down the being a car nerd route? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, what do I do? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, I guess. I guess it would be you can niche down and then branch out and yeah. build an audience through yeah. niching down. Mm. But I say that we have absolutely no niche and we just talk to anyone. So I'm going against <laughs> doing my own. I'm going against. I my think own it's advice. just trial and I think it's trial and error. Yeah, yeah, yeah for it, sure. It's just 
complete trial and error you've got to try things and if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't mm. yeah definitely. you know but if you don't give it a go you don't give it a go you're never gonna know so i need yeah. to you know get it done you know and aside from cars is there anything else that you are interested in so i know that obviously you're um, doing cars for business you're driving cars in your spare time and you've yeah. always loved cars yeah but is there anything else i know that you're a liverpool fan yeah, yeah, yeah is there any sports or anything else that you're are interested yeah in, but play football twice a week um nice. really like football big liverpool fan yeah. <laughs> got a big win yesterday yeah, it was <laughs> a good win it yesterday. was a good win big win yesterday um to be honest it's just all work you know a lot of people say to me you need to like do stuff i'm like i need to work yeah i actually need to work that's all i need to do mm. you know just stay focused stay on track you know don't i feel do, like the, the definite the definition of work differs based on the person and, and how they perceive their work because yeah. work for you is doing what you love yeah. Yeah. working with cars is what you enjoy yeah. but work for a lot of people might be going to do something that they don't want to do so yeah. their perception of you working all the time mm. is skewed because of what they think of work well when when I work like I don't even consider <coughs> work because I love it mm. you know mm -hmm. I, I just love cars so it's like the end of the day, I'm not like, oh, thank God that's over. I'm just like, I'm going home, I'm doing research, I'm looking at all the trader, I'm seeing the trends, mm -hmm. I'm seeing what inquiries we've had, I've seen what leads we've had. Um, I'm constantly looking up new cars on YouTube, you know, is that going to be good for us? Should we potentially go to that dealer and buy, order one of these cars? You know, and I think it's, you know, for example, let's use the new Ferrari Pro Sangue, the new Ferrari FUV. It's not a SUV. They say it's a Ferrari. An utility. FUV. I've not heard the whole. Oh, no, no, because no, Enzo Ferrari said we will never make an SUV. Yeah. So yeah. obviously they brought out this car oh, and it's like an SUV, SUV, but they said it's a Ferrari utility vehicle. Uh, that's <laughs> so um, you know, do we order one of those? Mm. You know, is that going to perform well? You know, obviously, you never know. So you've always got to be in the loop. You know, know knowing what cars are coming. Yeah, I've seen you guys and, just got the. The, what is it Lamborghini Huracan Storato is that right oh yeah yeah the Storato that's a really cool it's, car it looks sick the off-road Lambo yeah that, that's a really cool car really cool car so it's like you know just constantly keeping the loop and knowing stuff you know if you when, when you're in and around the space you've always got to keep your eyes and ears open because mm. you hear things you see trends oh the Taycans are dropping yeah you know obviously electric vehicles you can <laughs> Speak about that if you want to. Yeah. So, well, have you? Have you first of all? Have you driven an electric vehicle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what do you think? We of had it? the first Taycan in the country. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And what did you think? What do you think of electric cars compared to driving? Broke down on the way wow. home from Porsche. <laughs> did, did it? First electric Porsche Taycan Turbo S in the country. We had it. White Mission E wheels. Beautiful. Broke down on the way home. It said we had like 25 range miles and we got like five miles down and the car just conked out on the Chesterfield bypass. Wow. It's not a terrible place to break down, but it's not I, ideal. I know, but flip it out, like, you it, say, it says I've got 20 you. miles yeah. and I've got gone five miles down. Like, it was ridiculous. Especially from a new Tycoon as well. And I'm cars. bad for running out of petrol anyway. Like, I, if I've got like, <laughs> I'll, I'll be like a V12, six and a half litre Lambo and it'll say I've got like one mile and I've got like five miles, I'll risk it. <laughs> you know, you know? So how much do you keep an eye on like electric cars regulations and stuff because I, I mean I don't know the ins and outs but I did when I was at school because it's the kind of thing that you write case studies well, 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 well I'll, I'll tell you what I think of electric cars mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to work number one I think we've already realised that it's not going to work imagine we've just not got the infrastructure for it in mm. the UK if you're within London it works because there's so many charge points yeah when we first got that Porsche Taycan which was a while back so obviously there's more charges now the closest supercharger to me was 25 minutes away in uh, Ikea. Right, that was yeah, the closest yeah. supercharger to me. For most people, it's just not convenient. Is it, it, so like that? I had to get my somehow dead car to Ikea mm. to charge my car. <laughs> I was like, what the hell's going on here? And you, just for example, think of a motorway. So I think we've all got electric cars. So let's, we live in a reality where all, we all drive electric cars. Yeah. Think of a motorway service station. Yeah, think of how many cars go in and out of that service station. Like, mm. think of that was electric cars. So everyone there has got 40 minutes wait. Yeah. Yeah. How many charging stations would you need? Like, it's not possible because how many cars would come in the space of 40 minutes? Yeah, you just get people. It's not possible. I mean, I know that Toyota have just brought out a new battery 
they've apparently cracked the code and they brought out a battery where you can get 400 miles in 10 minutes right. which is unbelievable yeah, compared that's, to what that's... we've got now now we've got that you get 300 miles in 40 minutes you know so yeah it's unbelievable compared to what we've got now but still in 10 minutes how many cars would be pulling up mm. you know to use that that you know to refuel basically yeah. to recharge i just don't think it's possible i've never thought of it like that i don't really think it's good point. i mean i i don't want to name certain dealers but certain dealers aren't even buying back their own electric cars right really so they'll sell electric cars and if someone wants to go buy a car and they've got an electric car to park exchange they won't accept it just because of how poor they're performing hmm so is it so to conclude is it not something that really worries you no i think that 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 ban that ban wherever it is 20, 20 is it 2035 now they it's it, it. I don't it's, it was just something. keep pushing they keep back. The, i yeah, just think they, they're gonna keep pushing it back yeah. and then i think they're gonna go hydrogen personally that's what I think. Yeah. Put yeah. my hands up if they don't, but I don't <laughs> think they're going to go hydrogen. Right, I see. Um, but yeah, like, you've seen the Taycans, Porsche Taycans, they've just fallen out there. So are you guys not really getting involved in the Taycans and stuff now? Well, it depends. Still... It depends. If you're a buyer, it's a great time to buy because you're getting a Porsche Taycan that was once 120 grand for 70 grand. Mm, yeah. So you're thinking, bloody hell, and what, the car's a year old, it's done 2,000 miles. But it's just... You know, I mean, actually, yesterday I was looking. There was a Porsche Taycan at Porsche, seventy-three plate done hundred miles. The list was one hundred and twenty, and they're selling it for hundred grand. Wow, I think that says that says quite a lot in itself, <laughs> yeah, doesn't it? Exactly. You know. Yeah, fair play. But the car market is on a little bit of a down right now, mm, in yeah. general. You know, but it's it's all very interesting to learn. So something that you said before as well was that there's actually quite a big link, I've seen you got your watch on now, yeah. between cars and watches. Yeah. Well, I feel like all the car dealers that I seem to meet, they always like have a little bit of like a watch. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They always like to get dabbling a few Their watches. Little side hustle. Yeah, I, f- I feel like it's kind of the thing. For example, if you were to win the lottery, I felt like the first thing that 80% of the people would do is buy a car and buy a watch. Buy a yeah. nice car, buy a nice watch. I feel like that's mm. just like the go-to thing. So they kind of come hand in hand. Obviously, people that buy luxury cars normally have a luxury watch. And obviously, we deal with a lot of customers that have nice watches. And so, yeah, I do like to... Dabble in the watches sometimes. Yeah. Have you have you ever been at a point where you're doing like kind of some kind of package that you're selling a car and a watch to the same No, 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 like no. That. We've been offered watches for cars, but it's never something we do. Never something we do. Well, I mean, I'd never say never, but... It's just not never something that it's so rare. Yeah. It feels like such a strange trade. You're giving someone a big car and yeah. they're giving you a little yeah. watch. But then the watch is worth like double the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's something it. that I want to come back to about Apollo that yep. I really admire hmm. is that you've managed to keep it as family run as you can. Well, that's what's so important. Mm. Mm-hmm. That is what I mean. If you look at our reviews, you'll read the experiences that customers have and that is the most important thing for us literally the customer's welfare and happiness is so important for us because we want these people to be customers for life like yeah. they don't want to go anywhere else and it's true you know our main competitors are mostly down south because there's not really many places like us up here you know mm-hmm. there's a few um but a lot of the big boys are down down south. I'm talking like. So it sounds like that kind of personality behind the brand name is exactly, quite a big thing for you exactly. guys. Exactly, and that's kind of why I wanted to push my sister to be the face of the brand because I feel like her being a woman in the car scene as well. Yeah. Is really sure. interesting, and it'll get attention as well, which is good for the brand and good for her as well because she could make her own, you know, Instagram account with loads of followers and then get deals or whatever. You know, I wanted people to kind of see her and then come into the show and be like oh that's that Miriam girl you know so you all yeah, feel like you've yeah. got that connection I feel like it's a big thing yeah definitely for mm. sure mm. you know you go into a showroom a lot of people are scared you know a lot of people are scared to go into dealers and like you know you see some people like, hey, I guess uh, it's quite intimidating for it is intimidating well. you go into Phil with all these cars, you know, and you get salespeople running around. Yeah, know. I was going to say the salespeople probably, you know, and you got people who are, who are trying to close you and that. Exactly. Yeah. So, so when you um, recognize someone, it's like if you ever watch any YouTubers and you've met them in person, you already feel like you know them. 
Yeah. Or if you see anyone online and you follow them, you already feel like you know them. So there's already a comfort level there. That's why I wanted to, you know, use Miriam as the I kind of. I think that like instantly breaks that salesman stigma yeah, as well. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of, I don't know, like what you were saying about people getting intimidated. When mm -hmm. you go into like, I guess, a normal showroom, mm -hmm. you get that. I guess it's a different kind of treatment. Have you ever seen Andy there? Elliott on Instagram? Andy Elliott. Do you know, him, if, no, no. Search Andy Elliott when you get home. He's basically like a salesman that's blo blown up in the past. But oh, he's, yeah, uh, yeah, you, yeah. you know yeah, who Andy Elliott is. And he basically, his uh, kind of philosophy, I'm, I'm not hating, I think his mm. videos are quality. Um, but his philosophy for sales is like, you literally, you, you would rather die than let a customer <laughs> get away from you. Oh. <laughs> and, like some of the scripts he uses to try and close people, it's, it's specifically for car sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sounds like if you're a customer and you just want to go home, this yeah. dude is not going to leave you alone. Yeah. Oh no, there's no pressure. You know, yeah. I think that, that's the most important thing. You know, a lot of people feel like if they go view a car, they're pressured to buy it. Yeah. Not at all, you know, you know, not at all. You know, do what you want, come back, you know, whatever you want, take your time, no problem. Especially with the kind of cars that you're selling, it's, you a, need to be it's a big decision for you need people. To be, to be yeah, spending people that are spending kind of half a million pounds on cars. I mean, a lot of people do finance now, mm. um, which is another thing as well. A lot of people have a stigma about finance. A lot of you know, I was speaking to one of my uh, friends who's a, like a rapper, a musician, and yeah. um, he was like, oh, "I like that car." I was like, "Oh, it's cheap on finance." He's like, "I can't drive a finance car just because the image, you know." Yeah, like, but it's such a stigma like there's such a narrative about having a finance car honestly a lot of the wealthiest people finance their cars yeah just because having money in your pocket is so important mm. for example if i've got let's call it 100 grand if i've got 100 grand stuck in a car and i'm just driving that around what's it going to do it's going to go to 95 grand you know you're losing money whereas if i've got if i put 20 grand in the car into the car and i'm paying a small monthly fee i can use the rest of that money to make me money, yeah. you know, for our business especially, cash flow is the most important thing. Every bit of money goes into the cars, you know, and that's what makes us money. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's there's such a weird stigma around it, and I just don't understand it because obviously people finance cars for other reasons as well. Yeah. You know, but a lot of the wealthiest customers always finance their cars. Yeah. Imagine laying five hundred thousand pounds out. Just yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, people do it. People mm. do it, but it's a lot of money. It's yeah. a lot of money. Yeah, it's a fun ton of. <laughs> but money. I understand why people don't find us as well because the interest rates are high. Yeah, you know, mm. they're an all time high. They're you know the in kind of going rate now is eleven point nine percent. You know, a year. Wow. 11.9 percent that's quite especially on a car like when you're paying 500 grand on a car <laughs> yeah wow that that's gonna add up mm -hmm. I... you look after people and people come back to you the, yeah. like, that's the key mm -hmm. you know sure the guy loved the car he said the car's yeah. an absolute dream he said yeah i remember you oh you this showroom was bigger than the one before isn't it i was like yeah it's just a little bit bigger <laughs> but yeah it's um it's really good and a lot of dealerships especially the ones down south you know the big boys they operate on like 90% consignment sales yeah so like only 10% of oh. their stock is actually theirs mm. but why wouldn't you you're not you're not outlaying all yeah. this money and you're getting yeah. to sell the cars and you're making money off it so when you yeah. talk about the big boys down south or in London have yeah. they just been operating for lot for way longer yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You, so, some of these guys have been running for 15 years you know like Ro Romans is probably the the top dog is yeah. that the one that's like red and black no, Romans is like white and black. Ro Romans International, Google them guys. They've got a beautiful showroom. So for the car industry, would you say that the, the longevity of how long you've been a business really matters? Uh, I don't think, it, the only thing it matters is, is in terms of growth. Mm, yeah. So the only thing, like if you go to them or you go to us, the car buying experience is gonna be no different. You're gonna be happy with the car. You're gonna get a really good car. Mm -hmm. The thing is they've just grown in size yeah so they've got more cars so they've got one uh, this is a rough guess 130 cars for example 130 cars whereas we've got i think so now i've currently got 50 or something 50 or something like that so it's just it's just a scale and you know we started with obviously four cars to seven cars to 12 to 25 to you know slowly slowly growing mm. and it's just going to keep going like that yeah so th that's the thing with with time you know you just constantly grow Location wise, then do you think you're gonna just stay around, like stay up north? Well, stay this the, 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 and this that? is what a lot of people say to say to us, like, oh, 
you were in Sheffield, you know, this, that, you're in Sheffield, uh, no one's going to buy the cars. But the thing is, as I said before, there's four SVJs in the country. It doesn't yeah. matter if you're in Scotland, if the SVJs in Sheffield are traveling to Sheffield. Yeah. The type of cars, they're that limited edition where you travel for them. Yeah. It's no. not like, for example, a Corsa, where there might be a Corsa down the road in terms of traveling to Sheffield, uh, to London for it. Yeah. You know, there, there's a Corsa accessible near me, so I'm going to buy that. Even if it's £500 more expensive, I might go buy it or whatever, you know. It's that exclusivity of the cars, isn't it? Mm -hmm. like, like you yeah. guys provide. Anyway. If you want the car, you know, there's only two in the country. One's in brown, you don't like it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's in red, you're yeah. going to come buy the red one, aren't you? Yeah, Obviously, sure. personal preference. So you said that you wanted Apollo to be the biggest the biggest dealership in the country, mm -hmm. biggest luxury dealership in the country. Would yeah. you ever want to expand overseas? Do you think that would benefit you? Or would it just um, be too much of a headache? I think it would be too much of a headache because the thing is you want to keep everything in your under your control. Mm. You want to, it's like a food chain, for example, and you're the head chef. You want to keep your morals of the company. We're a family run company. We want to keep that, you know, that feel of having being really cared for. Yeah. If something's too far away, it's out of reach. So you can't control it as much. Whereas if it's in the UK, you know, for example, if it was in Manchester or it was in London, you know, that's very accessible for us. So we could, you know, we could implement our morals or, yeah. you know, what we want to do into that company. And it's not out of reach. We can control everything. I think that's the most important thing, you know. Also, growing too quick is a problem. Yeah. Right now, if we wanted to, we could, we could have 70 cars. Yeah. But we're just slowly, slowly, slowly build. You don't want to get too ahead of yourself you know slowly slowly build I guess everything else has got to build around that yeah. as well isn't it? not mm -hmm. just the, the amount of cars it's true you, you need to control and grow when the time's right mm -hmm. don't just let the growth take over because then you'll you'll make mistakes and you can make big mistakes you know so everything control then move control then move control then move I think it's very important Mm -hmm. It sounds like you've scaled at a pretty rapid pace anyway, yeah, we to have, be honest. We, <laughs> we have, but it's been very controlled. It's it's yeah. not been, it's been super controlled. You know, it's never been like, oh, this is too much trouble. Like the only time there was a bit of trouble was when, um, was when we were, the, like the showroom was in Matlock and mm -hmm. I lived 45 minutes away. And like sometimes a customer would be like, "Yeah, I'm coming," and they'll be there an hour early, and I'm not there. <laughs> then I'm gonna drive all the way. I'm like, "Oh no," <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's the only problem because like sometimes that's the thing with having a business. Someone calls you there, you know. If someone was to call me right now, you know, <laughs> 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 so if someone was to come go buy a two hundred grand car, you know, I I need to be there. Yeah, uh, no sure. matter what time. That's the thing with having you. A lot of my friends, you know, or a lot of people say oh having your own business it, it must be quite easy but i always say for example if i worked in subway when my shift's over i don't give a crap about that place it could like burn down tomorrow <laughs> it's not my problem yeah, yeah. Sure. whereas it, everything's your problem it's your own it's call 24 7 really yeah. aren't you? so if i get a call saying zach i've got this car for sale i've offered it through other people if I'm not first, I'm not first. So I need to go drive down to London at 11 o'clock at night to go yeah. get a car, you know. Yeah. I've had it before where I'll be chilling in bed and someone will come from Birmingham saying, oh, there's a car up in uh, London that I like. Uh, would you would you go look at, oh, you know, stuff like that, you know. You've, mm. you've got to be on it 24-7. You can't, there's no, there's no relaxing. <laughs> good stuff, man. Yeah, yeah it's good really stuff. good, yeah. So previously you spoke about going on a trip to Italy for Lamborghini. What about your relationship with Ferrari then? Obviously you talked about the new FUV coming mm. out. Mm. If somebody wants to say like acquire this car, obviously there's a lot of procedures for getting these more exclusive cars, a lot of backlogs for the next few years. Mm. How does somebody kind of go about getting it? So each dealer is different. So Porsche has a way of allocating slots Ferrari has a way of allocating slots mm -hmm. they've all got different ways so no one really knows how it works but Ferrari is a point system right so if you buy for example if you bought yeah if you bought the 458 if you bought the 488 if you bought the F8 if you bought the whatever 
you've got a certain amount of points. Right. So you need a certain amount of points to be allocated a slot of a car. It's kind of like with uh, what football teams do with away tickets. So you have to go to a yeah. certain amount yeah, of yeah, games yeah, yeah. to get to, get to, go <laughs> That's to a Wembley. Good, no, it's a very good way of you know understanding it. And But what's happened with the Pro Sangre with a lot of people is a lot of like good Ferrari customers, yeah. they've gone and asked for the Pro Sangre and they've said, you can have it if you buy this car or that car. And the main car that people have been asked to buy is the 296. Mm -hmm. So the 296, if you look at the car, it's unbelievable. You know, it's 800 and something brake horsepower, it's hybrid, it's unbelievably fast. It's beautiful, it's not as beautiful as something as the F SF90 or the F8. You know, a lot of people have been talking about the looks of the 296, but personally, I think it's beautiful. But people were made to buy that car Mm -hmm. just in order to get the Pro Sangre. No one actually wanted that car, you know, because it had this thing around it where that's the car, that's a stepping stone. Mm, yeah. So everyone was made to buy this car and they immediately had the same idea and they still it to order trader, which has kind of ruined the market for that car, which is a shame mm -hmm. because the car is actually an incredible car, yeah. you know. And uh, similarly to Porsche, you know, uh, I was watching something on YouTube where a customer wanted the new GT3 RS. Yeah. Which is a super limited car. You know, it's got the aero, the Everyone big wing. The oh, RS it's incredible. Thing, it's an unbelievable car. And he went to Porsche and said, I want it. They said, okay, you've got to have 10 cars, 10 Porsches before you get that car. Mad. He got to his eighth Porsche and they said, we can't guarantee you a slot. <laughs> I think I've seen a video on this. Yeah, well, it was trending. I saw it. it was, How incredible. much like estimate would he have spent oh. on eight Porsches? Well, let, let just call each Porsche hundred grand. You know, spend, <laughs> you know, you're spending a million quid. You know, because, you know and you know, you'd have bought like the Turbo S, which are way more than hundred grand. Yeah, I was gonna know, say some of the cars, but let's just say they were hundred grand. So he spent well over a million quid with them just to not even be guaranteed oh a Porsche. But we know people that have person that have, you know it's happened personally with Lamborghini, for example. You know, they're promised a car. They say, "All right, buy these, buy them." You're not guaranteed anything. Yeah. You know, it's it, you know each dealer works differently. There's no <clears throat> set way, but it's, it, 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 it it's normally you've got to. Have, bought a certain yeah. amount of cars or does it kind of differ place like what I say I don't know maybe if you're in Italy or something would it be different to in, in the UK or is it just that global yeah, yes so for example Porsche GT3 RS in the UK is sold out so you can't buy them new anymore from dealer so yeah. apparently but apparently um, I was reading that in America there's a few free slots yeah so like anyone could just go and kind of buy a GT3 RS if you've got the money. Yeah, or go is... import it to UK or something. Yeah, but obviously then you've got an imported car. It's yeah. A different side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, in the UK, it's very different to like somewhere like America. Yeah. Know? But, yeah, it's, it, every dealer's different, which is interesting. So you've got to have a good relationship with them all. Even Land Rover, you know, some, yeah. some Land Rovers, you go and order them. You know, if you've got a good relationship, you can get a car in six months. If you've got a bad relationship, you get it in two years, you know? Yeah, I guess they've got some, even now, they've got some more crazy cars coming out. Like, yeah. the, the, they've got the V8 Discovery and stuff well, like that Well, they've got the new, well. the new SVR, which is called the Range Rover SV. Oh, yeah. It lists at, like, 190. So crazy. you're paying 190 for a Range Rover SVR. Like, is it going to do well? I'm yeah. not too sure. You know, are you going to pay 200 and something grand? Because obviously they're going to sell for premiums. Mm. You know, that's another big thing, you know, premiums on cars. Plus for, for well let's cars. call it let's call it two ten. You're gonna pay two ten for an SVR which you can get a second hand Euros for the same money. Yeah. What yeah. are you gonna do? You know? Gonna premiums are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. are gonna get I'm Lambo. gonna get a Lambo. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, people like different things. Mm. Yeah. Fair fair, fair enough to be honest. Yeah, there's a lot of amazing cars out there that just don't do very well in terms of I mean when people always say to me see I look at everything in terms of what's going to make me money or what I'm not going to lose money on so yeah. and how well they sell so if someone says to me oh yeah that 720S McLaren 720S I'm going to be like yeah but look at the price of them you know <laughs> yeah. you know that they depreciate like anything so I, I look at cars that I'm going to buy in a very uh, car sales, not car dealer way. You know, yeah. I look yeah. at what's going to perform. Makes sense. You know, which is 
And do you to have a personal car? No. You don't own a car. So I drive just whatever I want to. Kind of. That's even better. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not fussed. I'm not fussed about what I drive. I mean, I've got a dog car. I've got a 2010 Ford Mondeo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which is like, it's the biggest pile of crap ever. But I yeah. love it because you know, I just chuck my dogs in there. They just chill. And yeah. It's got an exhaust on it and some nice wheels. See, do, do you not just want that... that car that you can just get into and it's yours well, well, it might be a little bit it might I, be a Mackie's bag in the back I actually and... want I actually want to, Mackie's bag <laughs> I actually want to buy a car this year yeah. yeah I don't like speaking about money and stuff but I do want to buy a nice car this year that I want to cruise around in for a bit six you, months you got, got eyes on any car in particular yeah, yeah I, I've got I know exactly what car it is are you, are you not, not going to say other parts I know you're going to alright ends it. in F and then it starts with F and ends in Arari <laughs> 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 that's what I want to buy yeah. I, want, I want to buy Obviously, the models. I'm not gonna say the model, but I, I do want to. That that's like, it's because I was never a fan of the car, and yeah. I, I've actually done a YouTube video. That's another thing we'll talk about my YouTube channel. I've done a video on the car, and when I initially saw it and drove it, I didn't really, yeah, take a liking to it so much. But then, we bought one and sold one. And oh my god, it was amazing. It was because every car you drive. I mean, I know I'm contradicting myself in terms of the Aventador. I like it being raw, but in terms of a daily driver the car that I'm on about was really nice for that and I could picture myself yeah kind of like just gonna day. pull up to Ecky Road in an F40 or something yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like, do you know with like a loud car I always just think that like if I was going to my girlfriend's grandma's house and I had to turn yeah, up yeah grandma and, be chilling in the yeah, yeah, but if, it's, if it's half ten and grandma's in bed and I'm there outside waking up the whole neighbourhood I've got you something for you want... I've got something for you alright so going on to my YouTube channel you're on about grandmas in cars yeah <laughs> I've done a video so me and my sister had a YouTube channel well we're gonna start making videos again but we took a break because we were just so busy with Apollo basically mm -hmm. it's called Din Vlogs yep so we released a few videos just you know reviewing cars we did some like drifts in an AMG GTR we went and collected <laughs> a new Lambo we Sick. specced our cars with Lambo it's really cool because you get to see how it works so we've gone to Lamborghini we've specced our car we mm -hmm. spent time with them you see the process basically uh, but one of the videos, this will be good to clip actually. One of the videos is <laughs> I took my grandma in a Lamborghini Yoris and I absolutely ragged it with her. And she started screaming. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be, it'll be, it'll be, oh, it's so funny. How old You're gonna is your grandma? Some, I think she was, she's like 70, 70, 60, 60 something. 70. She's so funny because she's, because I'm mixed race there. So I've got like, my grandma's like white. Uh. Obviously, you look at me like, I'm, brown my grandma's white and she's quite yorkshire so she jumps in the back of the car and she's like being all yorkshire in the back and um and uh, yeah i'm just driving down the road and i just look at my sister and i'm like should i do it and i was ragged she goes ah! <laughs> it's, it's actually really funny i think it's got like ten thousand views that video Mad. It's, yeah, I'm not surprised. it's really good but I want to do it with my other grandma as well. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to start making uh, videos on that YouTube channel again now. Because it was really good and we got a good response. It was just that we were so busy that yeah. it was hard to kind of just keep up. So if you kind of, with your YouTube, you know where you want to take it. I know before you said you're like not sure the direction of all the personal you, you, fan stuff. YouTube is different because when me and my sister are together, we just bounce off each other. Like, yeah, yeah. We just really bounce. Like we're so different in terms of I'm like kind of the quiet one. I know probably don't see me on here, but... Like she's louder than me. Like she's yeah. really loud. We're gonna have to like, turn the mic quite, down when she comes on. Literally, you you are like that. She probably eat the mic or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it's just funny. Like we have a little like banter. We just mess around, mm -hmm. review cars. You know, we've done a really nice review with the Ferraris. We've got a four five eight, a four eight eight, and an F eight. And that video's from like thirty thousand views. You know, Sick. it's just us pissing about, and it's just like funny. People like authentic stuff. Yeah. Like, have you? I don't know how familiar you'll be with. Uh, have you ever heard of Sam Sulek? That you would probably recognise him if you saw him. But he's yeah. basically this this fitness dude yeah, yeah. who films himself driving to the gym. That no editing at all. It's literally yeah, just a camera a camera stuck to his windscreen yeah. of him talking in the car. He gets to the gym. He trains. He drives back, mm. and he posts every single day. It's a half an hour video. Mm. This dude's like our, like a year younger than you, a year older than us, mm. and he's probably making anywhere from like uh, just from ad revenue, probably about a quarter of a million a month of him just being super authentic yeah. on a YouTube video. But people buy into it yeah. because he's just a normal guy. Yeah, like people yeah. can relate to well, it. Well, well, that's that's the 
that's the thing with what made the, what made us so attractive mm-hmm. because obviously you see you see the cars you see everything everything's perfect but then you've got like actual people behind it like you think like even looking at some of the big dealers down south it looks just so manufactured and so fake whereas yeah. like we're actually like real people with like humor mm. and like you know what i mean so that's what was so i think fun with the youtube is that it was funny it was just people being real yeah and to be honest the the great thing about me and my sister is when there was a camera there it almost didn't feel as if there was a camera there mm-hmm. like yeah. i was for, i would forget we were filming like we'd have to cut some bits out because like, <laughs> I'd, be like <laughs> I'd be like i'd like swear at someone in the car if they'll cut me off or something yeah like, you know that's what makes it that's what makes it uh what made it really i good. guess that goes back to what you were saying about that personality behind the, yeah the brand as well anyway people yeah. see that it makes them you know, seem just you seem more authentic don't you yeah well that, as i said that's what i want i wanted people to come to the show and automatically recognize us it, you know? it does help like even when we reach out to people about the podcast yeah when people have a bit of thing when they have some stuff on their social media page and you can kind of gauge what kind of yeah. person they are it makes it a lot easier when well, that's you why it's them. hard for me and you have absolutely nothing on I'm your page lo- do, do, do you know why I'm, I'm a very low-key person but what it's it's difficult because what i do is quite hikey yeah you know, yeah, sure. you know, you know it's, very, it's very contradictory but i like to be very private i like yeah. to keep things to myself like the only thing i'll do is like post on my story now and again like I, I, i've not posted in like three years <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but um obviously that's why I've come on this podcast because obviously you guys asked me to and it's also something new for me you know yeah. I've not been in front of the camera before like this um, and it's something I want to start doing because mm. I think it's only going to benefit myself yeah definitely and I think as I said I don't know what type of content I want to do but I think whatever I do will be successful mm-hmm. yeah you know that's kind of my I, I feel like everything happens for a reason yeah for so sure. that that's my thing everything happens for a reason and everything will fall into place that's my i don't know i think i think clearly it's, it's showing already isn't it? you know that's my so what's next for you after this what's next um so i mentioned something to you before and i am working on something that will revolutionize the uh, way cars are bought and sold mm-hmm. and it's going to be massive but I've signed stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my company and I can't say much about it, but I'm working on something, developing something very big. Very I big, look forward to hearing about which it. Which hopefully yeah. will be launched sometime this year, towards the end of the year. Yeah, Sick. Well, we'll, have to, we'll have to do another one when it's out. We'll Zach, it it's back. been a pleasure to have no you No problem. On. For someone who doesn't know anything about cars, I have enjoyed speaking to <laughs> no you. No problem. It's been cars. great to have you on. It's been a pleasure. Nice one, man. Thank Charlie, you so much for coming Jacob, down. I'll watch Thank the mic. You, no problem. <laughs>